When asked whether there are people in the Russian elite who would like to eliminate Putin because they believe that life will be better without him, Russian political scientist Mikhail Scheitelman answered this way, I think that all these forces, which certainly exist, forces that think that, yes, they will be able to live better only after eliminating Putin. Yes, they need to negotiate with the West, who see that Putin has weakened, that our invasion of the Kursk region is a signal that Putin has really weakened. Putin was unable to use the nuclear doctrine. He was unable to do anything. If Ukraine calmly introduces troops into the Kursk region and the Russian army flees, then this, of course, weakens him among the elites. Mikhail Scheitelman said in an interview with Alexei Goman, a political scientist named the best moment for a revolution in the Russian Federation. I don't think that such a thing can happen smoothly and out of nowhere. Like we thought and thought and finally came up with it. It doesn't happen that way. Revolutions don't happen in the format of we thought and thought and finally came up with it. Revolutions, like conspiracies, happen when the moment is ripe, when it's impossible to do otherwise, when, as Lenin said, yesterday was too early and tomorrow will be too late. This is a key story. There must come a moment when yesterday was too early and tomorrow will be too late. The first such revolution tried to happen more than a year ago when Prigozhin did it. In June 2023, the march on Moscow took place. The revolution failed. This is normal, but it showed this revolution that it can be done, the writer explained. Then Mikhail Scheitelman, with irony in his voice, drew a parallel between the events in the Russian Federation and the revolution as a phenomenon described by Lenin. As it is said in my favorite article by Lenin, this was not yet a movement of the masses themselves. The proletariat, the only revolutionary class, must stand at their head and lead millions of peasants to open revolutionary struggle. We have not reached this stage, but the Decembrists awakened Herzen. That is, the Decembrists are Prigozhinites. They awakened someone else. U.S. long-range B-2 stealth bombers launched airstrikes early Thursday morning targeting underground bunkers used by Yemen's Houthi rebels, officials said. It wasn't immediately clear what damage was done in the strikes. However, there are no previous reports of the B-2 Spirit being used in the strikes targeting the Houthis, who have been attacking ships for months in the Red Sea corridor over the Israel-Hamas war in the Gaza Strip. According to Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, strikes were carried out on five fortified underground facilities. He added that the attack was executed using B-2 bombers, sending a message to terrorists. This was a unique demonstration of the U.S. ability to target facilities that our adversaries seek to keep out of reach, no matter how deeply buried underground, hardened, or fortified, Austin stated. The Houthi group in Yemen is supported by Iran. Along with the Palestinian Hamas and Lebanese Hezbollah, the Yemeni militants are part of the so-called axis of resistance against the U.S. and the collective West. Following Israel's military operation against Hamas in October 2023, the Houthis began attacking commercial vessels associated with Western carriers in the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. In response, the US and Israel have repeatedly struck Houthi terrorist targets in Yemen, but allies have yet to halt their attacks.